We all make this big mistake when we first start out on YouTube. I'd work for a month, literally an entire month on a whole ass video all for it to end up getting 20 or 30 views. Then I had the big realization. What actually sets apart the big creators from people like you and me is their thumbnails. So with that information, I improved my thumbnails. I went from getting 20 views all the way to 6,000 views, all because I used these thumbnails. And today I'm gonna show you exactly how you can make thumbnails that get you views. This is the most important thing for sure. Please waste no time. Go and research exactly what gets views in your niche, gather at least 10 videos, and find out what's in common in their thumbnails. For my niche, which was video editing, a lot of the times there was a character covering half the screen, a colorful background, and it always displayed what the video was about. Now, after discovering what works well in your niche, you're just gonna take that and copy it. While obviously adding your own twist. But with all this said, there are still some tricks that you can't see that do make up for a better thumbnail. So let's just get into Photoshop. So now that we're in Photoshop, the first thing I'm gonna need is a reference image. So mine is this image over here. I really like how this thumbnail looks, so we're just gonna take it and put it all the way over here somewhere. And if we break down this image, what you can see over here, on the right side, we have a character. On the left side, we have some text and some glowing going on. And in the background, we have an editing timeline with this like zoomed in effect. Since the background is an editing timeline, I'm gonna go ahead and search up Premiere Pro editing timeline. I'm gonna want one that's a bit vibrant and full of colors. So this one looks perfect. So we're gonna right click and copy the image, go to Photoshop, Control V. Now this shortcut is very important. Control T is to transform, which is basically to expand the image or decrease its size or whatever you wanna do with it. So we're just gonna Control T and then hold Alt and drag one of the corners out. And what else do I see in this image? The background's a bit dark and there's this zoomed in effect. So we're just gonna go ahead and recreate that. So first off, I'm gonna press Control M and I get this curve over here. I'm gonna drop the left side a tiny bit and increase the right side. This gives it some contrast, aka some glow. Then I'm gonna select the layer, go up to filter, go down to blur, radial blur and click on zoom and add in something like 25. Yeah, that looks nice. I'm gonna expand the size a tiny bit more. I don't want the background to be too colorful because I actually want our subject to stand out and our text. So as you can see on the right side of our image here, we have the rock staring. I'm gonna have someone who's even better than the rock. I'm gonna have the man, the myth, the legend. Who the fuck is that guy? All right, now that we have a picture of our subject, we're gonna copy this image, go into Photoshop, and I'm gonna go over here to the left and select the selection tool. The selection tool just allows us to select an area and the Photoshop will automatically draw a mask around the object in this area. So select the object selection tool and we'll go ahead and select the area inside this white and it's gonna automatically select Groove for us. Now that we have a selection around him, we're gonna make sure that we have selected our layer with Groove and then we're gonna press Ctrl J to duplicate. This will only duplicate the selected area, which means we're gonna have a layer with only our subject in it. So now as you can see if we delete the layer that's under it, there we go. So now that we have Control T, Hold Alt, expand them and put them on the right side. Now to make them pop out a bit more, we're gonna go to the layer and to the right side of it and double click. This will open up the layer style. Then we're gonna go all the way down and add a drop shadow, just a very subtle one. And then a stroke, mess with the size until you're happy with it. Something like 20 will do good. Then we're gonna select him, Control M as well, and we're gonna add some contrast by dragging the left side of our curve down and the right side of our curve all the way up. Again, we're gonna add some finishing touches at the end to make sure that everything pops out, but now we'll need to work on the part that's missing, which is the text. Now, I really like how the text looks in this thumbnail, so we're just gonna mimic exactly that. Let's click T and write whatever we want. I'm just gonna write text. Now we're gonna select this, go over here and change the font to whatever we want. I'm gonna be using a font called Mont. Yep, looks perfect. Again, Control T and Alt drag to expand everything. Let's see if we write in all caps. There we go. That looks very nice. Now we're gonna select our text, go to the layer, double click on the right side. I really like the purple and pink gradient that he's using. So we're gonna go ahead and mimic that. So go down to gradient overlay, add a gradient, double click here. And now let's make the left side purple, something like a bluish purple color and the right side, a bright pink. We're gonna change this down to minus 90. And now we'll need to add a few more things. So the first thing I'm gonna add is a inner glow. Go ahead and add an inner glow, set the mode to overlay. And then we're gonna mess with these settings until they look good. So I'm just gonna be adding some size, keeping the range all the way at 100%. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is go all the way down and add a drop shadow. Then we're gonna bump the spread all the way up and then increase the size a tiny bit just so that we have a outline and change the distance, change the angle something like 140. We're gonna mess with the size and until it looks sharp enough. And then we're gonna go down to the drop shadow layer and click this plus sign. And then we're gonna select the drop shadow that's below and change its color to white. Now we're gonna increase the size. Now the last step is we're gonna add an outer glow to make sure that everything pops out. So go over here and go to outer glow, change the color to purple or pink, both work really good. Change the mode to screen, make the opacity something like 40%, increase the size, 
mess with the spread until it looks good enough. And I think that looks really good. Nice. Now that we have our text, we're gonna add in the words that we want. So. Go back to Photoshop and let's change our text to best. Make sure it's all caps. Control T. Decrease the size, add some rotation. Okay, I want it to be right around here. I'm gonna select the move tool, hold alt and drag the text down and change it to there. Now I'm gonna move it, control T and decrease the size. And that looks pretty good. Maybe overlay them just a tiny bit. Now I like the fact that this is taking up the upper left portion of the screen. That's gonna allow us to put the Photoshop logo on the bottom left. Search up Photoshop logo PNG. I'm gonna copy this. Go over here, right click our object selection tool and we'll get our magic wand. Gonna allow us to select these black corners over here while holding down shift. Select our eraser and just delete those. And then control T and decrease the size a tiny bit. Change the rotation, put it at the bottom. Double click on the right side of the layer, add a white stroke, uh, decrease the size just a tiny bit. We're gonna add an outer glow and then we're gonna add an inner glow. And actually this one needs to be strong so that it looks 3D. Yeah, there we go, that looks nice. Now if we take a look at our thumbnail, there's some lightning kind of exploding from behind the logo. So we're actually gonna copy that and search up something like anime lightning and we'll just go ahead and add it over here increase the size all the way up i'm gonna double click on the right side of the layer change the blend mode to i think color dodge would work and i'm gonna drag the layer all the way down to under the text but above our background then i'm gonna control t move the origin of the lightning all the way to behind our logo and then increase the size maybe a tiny bit more and that should look a lot better now that our thumbnail is finished we're just gonna go up to the top left side click on file and go down to export and export as select the jpeg format put the quality all the way up make sure it's 1920 by 1080 and click this so you finished up the thumbnail and you followed everything that's in this tutorial but you're still missing one thing and that's actual good content because a good thumbnail with shit content is still gonna end up being a shit video so i'm gonna leave content creation tutorials on the screen right now go ahead and click on whichever one you want to watch and thanks so much for your time i'll see you in the next video bye